crying and he had a temperature he was like nearly 39 40 so pretty dangerous At point he was kind of like Whoa. five days in hospital uh three or four nights in our own private room doctors like 24 i'm gonna need 30k the lady says to me she's like uh <laughs> yeah number one taiwan number one enterovirus yeah. when he was one and a half last year and so you get dots in your you get your hands all becoming spots and then your feet and then your your mouth is blistered yeah. so then he couldn't drink because it's too painful so we had to take him to the hospital and by that point he was kind of like what uh, he hadn't drank he was dehydrated and he couldn't eat so he was hungry so he was crying and he had a temperature he was like nearly 39 40 so pretty dangerous so we get straight to the hospital and they're like, okay, this is serious. Straight into the hospital. They had to put a drip in him, you know? Yeah. Uh, so wow. to put the fluids into his body. And then straight away, he was in there. We were there for two, two days in the hospital ward. And then he got his own room. So we had our own room in the hospital where he could like shower. And the, the nurses and the doctors were all looking after him. And then we're there for about five days in total. And he's fine after that. I didn't really know much about this uh, virus yeah. and I didn't know what to do but like the hospital were really the people there the nurses and the doctors they were really first class service hospitals in Taiwan the medical system it's really first class service they fixed my son up really well looked after him um, cared for him and then he was fine that day my wife said take some cash you can't pay by card yeah get some cash out mm -hmm. so I'm thinking I take 30k out. Yeah. He had insurance. Like my son's got insurance. So I said, whatever it costs, yeah. we get the money back anyway. So yeah. it doesn't matter. So I'm thinking five days in a hospital, uh, three or four nights in our own private room, doctors, like 24. Yeah. I'm going to need 30k. But anyway, I don't care because. Yeah, you'd be like, like, re reimbursed or something. Yeah, you'd be reimbursed. The lady says to me, she's like, uh, 300. NT. So uh, Amazing. my car parking was 600. like 600 for the car park. <laughs> car in and out of the hospital because like my wife came, parked the car yeah. and then I went home for on the scooter and then she came and back and says like, it's maybe even more, maybe a thousand for parking for like the four or five days. Yeah. The hospital's 300. Wow. Plus then we had insurance as well. So that was all covered. So Amazing. I was, so my wife called, my wife's Taiwanese. She was like, oh, nigga, that's how much? I was like, 300. So 300, how can it She's like, you want to share with them? I was like, no, I want to share with them. And she said, 300. She said, okay. I left the hospital. I felt like a, a thief or something. Thief, yeah, you know? yeah. I felt like I'm stealing <sighs> something from the country. Well, that was a company of money. I was a little girl or something. And so I left the hospital to leave the hospital. Wow. Yeah. This is really cheap. So, 300. So, then I learned that because the child's under three, the yeah. government give uh, some subsidies mm -hmm. and then because it was enterovirus, this uh, highly contagious one, highly yeah. contagious virus, they give some more subsidies, wow. something like this. So it cost me 300 NT. Amazing. My child was fixed and that was it. So I was like super, super happy. And I was wow. like, Taiwan Yeah. number one, Taiwan number one. I heard a lot of stories actually, yeah, Taiwanese like uh, healthcare system is more really brilliant. Yeah. In comparison to most countries, it's really brilliant. Oh, in England, man, like it's free yeah. in England. It's free, everything's free. Okay. No health card, just free. But? Oh, you're going to be like laying outside on the road for like one week. My wife, uh, no, my brother's wife went there. They have five children when the baby was sick. Yeah. Oh man, she told me the story, it's horrible. She's waiting there for like 15 hours before someone could see the baby, you know. Oh Baby's my quite God. sick. There's like, sorry, there's no doctors. 15 uh, hours? Yeah, 15 hours in the waiting room. There's no doctors to see you. We've only got one doctor for the whole hospital. And she's there all day. Oh England's good, like small things, like you break an arm or something. But like if, if you need something in a maybe like that, an emergency or a child sick, especially at the weekend or something, yeah. Very bad, my friend. Very oh, bad. Oh, my lord. I have been to my work. This is where I just put all my trust in the people. Yeah. Are you sure? Do you want to leave? See you later.
approved by Joseph Kwan for a surgery to remove the problem from my head. Can't believe how cheap it is. I feel like I've made a mistake. Is that true? No, it's a lot of mistakes. I like this part. Today is my first time in 16 years going under the knife. Wow. Okay, so while we're waiting for the call from the operating room, we've come to take a rest in a local coffee shop. But as I mentioned earlier, I'm sure a lot of you are dying to know what the surgery is actually for. I've been getting some health checks recently on a couple of symptoms that have been showing up with my nervous system. A few weeks ago, I was recommended to have a CT scan on my brain to see if I can find any problems. And the doctor found a small tumor, not inside my brain, but on the outside of my skull, underneath the skin. Yeah known as a lipoma. A lipoma is a benign tumor that could become cancerous, probably wouldn't, but the location of the lipoma is right on the top of my head, right in my hairline. And while editing a few videos recently, I've noticed that it started to become more apparent, more evident, probably because my hairline is going further and further back across my head. So while the doctor explained that it probably won't cause many problems in future, he did give me the option of having it removed. So I took the option of having it removed and that's what we're doing today. <laughs> Right, yo, the waiting is over. We were just in Louisa Coffee when we got a phone call from the hospital inviting us in to start the process of the surgery. So we're heading back into the Li Fu building and uh, yeah, the nerves are starting to build a little bit now. I've been distancing myself a little bit from it. Now it's time. Probably the most nerve wracking thing is that my dick is gonna pop out of this thing. You must probably die wearing it. Yeah. I don't think This is where I just put all my trust into the dick. I would have been such a bad day. If he had an argument with his wife last night or a little drunk or a little hangover, I just have to trust that he's in good condition. Was she? Are you crying? Mm -hmm. Your eyes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need to check it's the right thing. We're not going to cut off my leg or cut off my balls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't until the nurse came in and asked me to sign the medical disclaimer that things really started to ramp up in seriousness. But soon enough, the nurse came to take me to the operating theater, so I said my goodbyes to my friend. Okay. Bye, See you later. And was rather dramatically asked to sit in a wheelchair to be taken off to the operating room. And it's here that filming had to stop, but through the wonder of my memory and the advancement of AI image creation, I will tell the story here in voiceover. As the nurse wheeled me into an elevator and took me to another floor before wheeling me gently into the operating theater, where I was asked to step out of the wheelchair and onto the operating table. And this is where, for some reason, AI thinks I got dressed into a full suit and tie. And I was surprised by how serious the operating theater was. I had expected this small surgery to take place in a normal ward just behind a curtain, but this was the real deal. Huge surgical lights, surgical tools all laid out next to the bed, and of course several nurses preparing everything for the surgeon's arrival. And after waiting on the bed for a good few minutes, the surgeon arrived and immediately came to expect what was to be done, and interestingly seemed to be accompanied by a Mexican intern, who was taking notes and answering the doctor's questions in a mix of English and Chinese. Now, I won't get into the full details of the procedure, but first, I think I was covered with iodine, then the area around the lipoma was shaved, then the surgeon told me he was about to inject the anesthetic, which for some reason AI thought he injected into my stomach, but yes, he actually injected it into my head. And that was basically the last thing I felt other than a little tugging on my skin here and there. I didn't even feel it when the nurses replaced my clothes with the Union Jack flag and swimming cap that AI seems to think I was wearing until I overheard the doctor asking his Mexican intern, in your country, do you show the sample to the patients? To which I blurted out, I really want 
want to see. And the doctor obliged by showing me a shiny white lump to which I inexplicably declared looks like one of my testicles. And the doctor pulled a face of pity and said, I hope your testicles are bigger than this before disappearing without so much as a goodbye. The whole surgery had taken about 45 minutes and of course the surgeon who I later found out was one of the top surgeons in Taiwan had performed the surgery excellently leaving me with a seven stitches and absolutely no pain at all. And I was then put back in the wheelchair and wheeled back to my friend where the filming can start once again. <laughs> And yes, I did feel really emotional, which I'll explain more in detail later. But basically being so helpless and also so well looked after, it caught up with me and I was fighting the urge not to hug the nurse and thank him and all the other staff for taking such good care of me. And perhaps a little part of me was thinking back to 11 years ago when they had done the same thing for William in the very same building. But anyway, back to the video and time to see how much this perfectly performed surgery was going to cost me using Taiwan's national health insurance system. For a surgery to remove the problem from my head. Can't believe how cheap it is. I feel like I've made a mistake. Is that true? No, it's not mistakes. I like this part. Yeah. I crossed out this and just wrote this. We can go get some nice dinner. After we get medicine, let's get medicine. How? Yeah. Okay. okay, and just like that, my first time going under the knife here in Taiwan is over. And I have to say, I feel incredibly emotional, incredibly moved, but also incredibly lucky to live in this country where not only is medical treatment cheap and affordable, but also at the cutting edge, the forefront of international medicine, where I really didn't have to feel as nervous as I did before going into such a minor surgery. As I said earlier, Chen Yen Zhang was completely professional, made me feel like there was nothing at all to worry about once I entered that surgery room. And all of the nurses and other supporting staff that helped me, I don't know what else to say other than a huge, Thank you for making me feel as um, safe and well looked after is the, probably the only way I can really describe it as simply as possible without crying here in the streets. I've got to wear this badge of honor for the next few weeks. While William is here, we're going to have to figure out a hat situation, but that's just a small price to pay in order to be safe and healthy and well looked after here in Taiwan. And as I said, just so happy and grateful to live in Taiwan where the medical system is so cheap, affordable, safe and 